And so they re-released Buhlman with the errors corrected. RGBM is proprietary. You don't get to correct those errors, which makes me nervous, but that's me. Okay, let's talk about dive computers as a final point. Again, I'm not against them. I think they're important, but the way to appreciate them is that they provide a first order approximation of risk. They get you to the ballpark. They're a good starting point, but don't trust the numbers and don't be surprised. If you get bent, the words that should never come out of your mouth in about 99% of the cases are, this was an undeserved hit. If you're diving to 80 meters, 100 meters, and oh, I did everything right, it was an undeserved hit, absolute nonsense. You're in the zone. If you are anywhere above about 50% of the no decompression limit of the US Navy tables, you have the possibility of DCS. So if you get hit, there's nothing undeserved about it. It may be unfortunate, it may be sad, it may be whatever, but it's not undeserved. Okay, so first order approximation of risk. And the biggest rule I want you to remember about um, this, the critical truth is that math doesn't equal physiology. Never, never. If you go back 300 years, people used to take the dimensions of your head, distance between your eyes and your ears, and they would determine how intelligent you were. Yeah, and we still believe in that stuff. Um, we do not have the math to explain physiology. Math is convenient. Physiology is messy, which I call job security. So, <laughs> you know, you just have to keep it in perspective. Okay, now let's talk about gradient factors, because I know that GUE likes gradient factors, so let's just talk about a couple of examples. So let's say you're running 1585 as a gradient factor. There are some challenges with this. If you're doing your first stop when you're at only 15% of the M value, which remember is a theoretical limit that was first proposed in the 50s before we had ultrasound and before we had a lot of research data, we know the M value limit is not safe for all. So if you do your first stop at 15% of the M value, they say you do that so you control bubble formation. Well, that's true. You're controlling bubble formation at a point where you don't have enough decompression that we would ex ever expect bubbles to form. But you have another problem there, and that is that you're taking on inert gas in any tissue that is not saturated. And so every minute you stay there, you're not stopping bubble formation because we wouldn't have them there. But you are taking on inert gas. And then if you go up to 85, you're 85% of a limit that we know is not universally safe. And a lot of people can dive GF high of 85 with no problem. Mm, but some people can't. So the question is, where do you want to set your practice for yourself and your students and the people you care for? I have a loved one rule, and I say, would I want a loved one to do this? And for me, 85 would be too high, but that's me. Let's say, alternatively, you want to use something like a 4070. The beauty of a 4070 is you get your ass off the bottom. And so you have less uptake of inert gas because you're getting further off the bottom before you do your first stop. And that's actually a benefit. And by ending at 70, we have much more of a buffer. And so that gives room for the problems that could occur. A lot of people say, I was diving with my buddy. Why did he get bent or why did I get bent and he did, I didn't, whatever. Why did one get bent and one didn't? I am a firm believer that there is no such thing as two identical dives. There are always differences. There could be difference in trim, in tank pressure that would adjust trim, in the amount of work, in any number of things. No two dives are the same. And so you want to make sure you have a buffer.